Hi guys, this is Crivoli again with another pen review and today we are going to have a look at another Laban pen or two Laban pens to be precise that Laban has sent to me for review. Thank you very much for that. I have already reviewed Laban pens before. I have reviewed the Laban Mento, which was a very interesting pen, <clears throat> an oversized pen with sort of a marble tortoise pattern. I have reviewed the Laban T325, which was also a marble swirl pen, not that oversized, but also, also a larger pen with a number six size nibs. Those were already interesting pens and they were nice pens. And those two pens here are not less interesting, but we'll have a look at them in a minute. The Laban pen, as all those Laban pens, well, of course, I got two packages, but I'm only going to show you one because they're essentially both the same. Not essentially, they're precisely the same. The same packaging that all the other Laban pens that I have reviewed so far come in a black cardboard box, matte cardboard box, looks very elegant, saying Laban 1981, which is when the company was founded, is a Taiwanese company, by the way, that do make quite a range of fountain pens. Have a look at their website and they do make fairly expensive fountain pens as well. And the ones here are not exactly cheap as well. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. The box slides out like that. Out comes a very elegant matte black, matte black box again that feels rubbery but looks very elegant. You open it up like that. That looks very elegant as well. Pen bed in here, Laban. 1981 as well. You get a little thingy like that with a Laban L and a laurel crown or bay leaf crown here. And then you get a glossy booklet saying refill your soul by writing. It's actually the international warranty and some filling instructions and all that. Oops, that fell down. Sorry. Oh, gotta pick it up. That's that. Now that we had a look at the box, let's have a look at these two pens here. Uh, I'll oscillate a little bit forth and back in between them. First of all, let me explain that these are essentially two different models and the two different models that we have here refer to the different pattern of those pens. Essentially, these are transparent resin bodies and they are then, uh, then they then have a metal overlay and that metal overlay now has different patterns. This one here, this pen here is called the Laban Corinth Pillar because that sort of looks like some pillars, I do guess. And that pen here is called the Laban flora because this is sort of a floral lantern pattern i do guess so now i have those pens in one of the finishes that they come in each so that means that corinthia does come in this matte black finish but it does also come in a silver and in a gold finish i guess and this flora here does come in this gold finish but it also does come in a silver or matte black finish while the rest of the pens do look the same well, now let's have a closer look at both of these pens. I'll start with the matte black Corinth first, which is a cylindrical pen essentially with capped off ends. At the top of the cap, we have a finial, which a very looks really nice, actually has an interesting grid pattern in here, the Laban L. Then again, this laurel crown that is inserted into the cap right here, that finial. We then have a clip that looks like that, slight teardrop shape, a ball down here, a little bit reminiscent of the Pilot Custom 74 clip, for instance. Very springy clip, very useful. That works nicely. The Laban L here again. Then, as said, it's a transparent body with a metal overlay. So that means that we have a very interesting semi-demonstrator effect we do see the nib right here through the cap, which is interesting. Um, 
the cap then tapers down like that onto the body we do through that transparent body resin body also see the converter that sits in right here the pen is inked with diamine blue black and then we do essentially have a blind cap back here i find it's a pretty nice design but i also personally do find that the threading that one sees in here and the way that plastic here looks it just looks a little bit i don't want to say cheap but it doesn't look as quality as it probably could look well they're well constructed pens no doubt about that but yeah it just it's just a matter of taste that's just me let's have a look at the pen in gold before we open the pen that now is the flora um you also have the same finial with that gridded that gridded finial with the laban l and the laurel crown the laban l here the same springy clip that works very nice and uh, you do also see the nib right through here it's also nice that the nibs are matched to the overall color of the pen so we have a black nib on the black pen and then we have a duo tone or bicolor gold and silver nib on the gold pen fits the pen very well and then also the cap tapering down like that onto the barrel and then this golden end knob that is actually not useful for anything it's just a knob that is there we open up the pen with one about two turns which still makes the pen usable as a note taker i find anything above or more than two turns full turns of a cap does get a little bit cumbersome for uncapping the pen a little bit under two turns right here still all right we don't exactly have an inner cap because that plastic thing here actually is sort of the inner cap the nib has no issue with drying out it's a pen on the slightly larger side i'll do a size comparison to my standard size reference pen Lamy safari in a minute the pen lays very comfortably in hand um, it's a medium weight pen but definitely rather on the heavier side we have a nice quite large section here that actually flares towards both sides it's very comfortable to hold it's a metal section but it is not slippery you can post the pen the pen does post very securely but since it has this metal overlay the cap is fairly heavy so the pen gets ridiculously top heavy and also very long so you basically can't write with the pen like that um so there's actually no point in posting the cap and then we have a very nice number six nib here with some scroll work on the nib is black says laban 1981 and then m4 medium and the feet down here as far as i understand this is a german made nib it's apparently not bock or jovo i don't know who makes those nibs but it is apparently a german made nib that's the information that i could find and then when we uncap the, this pen we have a golden section let's compare those two that then matches this golden pen very nice we have a duotone nib that looks slightly different uh, because the laban logo on that nib here actually does look a little bit different it also has this laurel crown um says then also iridium for the tipping material of course it's also a medium nib also number six size nib and the feet just looks slightly different so i don't know if that is another german nib manufacturer or if they've just used different feeds i can't tell you anything about that unfortunately but i've just noted that they look different on both of those pens we then unscrew the barrel and you get a laban branded standard international converter those to me look very much like the schmidt converters probably it is schmidt delivering those converters to laban not sure as said filled with diamine blue black a whole metal front here that is done very nicely that feels like a solid construction and we open the other pen as well it's essentially 
the same thing, right? You see this transparent construction here, the transparent barrel. It's actually a really cool semi-demonstrator effect, right? I mean, like you have sort of a demonstrator pen effect, but then you still have this metal overlay here, which, which makes it a very nice design. I find those pens do look very interesting. Let's compare the size of the pen to my standard size reference pen, the Lamy Safari, and I think it's safe to say that the Laban is slightly shorter than the Lamy Safari. And let's uncap those. I won't post both of them because they're plenty long enough to be written unposted. And as said, get ridiculously long when posted. Both of them, that also applies to the Lamy Safari which still is a wee bit longer than the Laban. Uh, let's compare the sections. Uh, I'd say they're, they're about the same width. The Laban is a little bit more girthy. It's a comfortable pen to hold as a matter of fact. Writing sample. Those nibs, as said, I don't exactly know who makes them. Right, nice. They're very smooth. Not a lot of feedback. They're pretty wet writers, both medium nibs. As said, nib comes up straight away here. Laban, this here is now the Corinth with a medium nib. As said, a very nice writing experience, very smooth writer, very pleasant, pretty wet. Let's write with the other pen as well. This is also a medium nib right here. That nib also comes up straight away. And we do here have the Laban uh, Flora is the name of that model here. That skip right here was me angling the pen, not correctly. Another medium nib. And that nib is the same wet writer. Then the nib we had a look at that we had a look at before. That's that with the review of the pens. So now one last thing for me is left to say, and you have maybe already noticed that omission, and that is the price of those pens. Well, now those pens, you can get them for instance, as said, I got them sent from Laban. I've looked it up on the internet. You can get them from the fountain penhospital.com or fountainpenhospital.com to be precise. For instance, where they are listed with $300 and sold at a street price of $240. Now, one of my reviewer colleagues, David with Figboot on pens, has reviewed this pen here in silver. I do normally not, when I see that a colleague publishes a review of a pen that I still have to review, I do normally not watch that review in order to try to be as unbiased as possible. But at the, in that case, I broke my rule and I watched the review. And David has also commented on the pricing of those pens. And he said, while they are on the higher side of what you could ask or whether priced on the higher side of what you could ask for such a pen, he still does not find the price outrageous. And I must say in that case, uh, while I often agree with David, in this case, I have to disagree with him. I find 300 list price and 240 street price for a steel nib pen that is not a piston filler, that is, that is too much in my opinion. And I, I want to ground my argument a little bit. I went and now I got to look up uh, on some tabs that I have open here. Um, I went to nips.com that it class that is, that is classic fountain pens and you get a reminder again street price 240 but asking price 300 let's take the street price of 240 for 240 you get a sailor pro gear for 248 on nips.com that is a 21 karat gold nip not a steel nip and it's sailor you get a lamy 2000 for 167 dollars um, and that's a Lamy 2000 with a gold nib and a piston filling pen. You can get a Pilot Vanishing Point for $108 at nibs.com and a Pilot Custom 823 that is a gold nib and a vacuumatic plunger filler for $288. And last but not least, you get the Waterman Karen, which is one of the flagship pens of Waterman, Waterman 
also a gold nib, inlaid nib, solid build. I mean, that pen is built like a tank, the Karen, and $232. So all the pens that I've mentioned right now all cost less to considerably less than this pen here. That is not to discredit, discredit or bash this pen. It is a nice pen. It is a solidly constructed pen. However, on that pen here, for instance, I found a little flaw that I got to point out. And you see that right here, that pillar here, while all those pillars sort of really stick to that resin or have enough tension to lay on that resin, that one here doesn't. I mean, it's not a deal breaker, but it's a bummer and it's certainly a bummer on a pen for $240. So my overall judgment, it's a nice pen. It's an interesting pen. It's an interesting looking pen. Would I buy it for $150? I would buy it for $240. I wouldn't buy it. I hope that review was useful to you and I'll see you at the next review. Bye bye.